Let's say I have a car, and inside the uh, car I have a pendulum hanging from the uh, ceiling. If the car is uh, stopped or at a constant velocity, I expect the pendulum to hang straight down. But as I step on the gas and start to accelerate, I would expect the pendulum to start swinging back. And the m faster I accelerate, the more I would expect that pendulum to swing back. If I start braking, and remember braking means that I'm applying a force in the opposite direction of my uh, velocity, I slow down and I would expect, oops, hold on a moment here. And as I uh, brake, I would see the, uh, the bob on the pendulum uh, swing forward. If we could calibrate the amount that that swings forward or back, we would build ourselves a nice little accelerometer. And that's what you'll be doing in this project. Now with your accelerometer, you'd expect that as you accelerate forward, you would see the pendulum start to move back. As you accelerate more, the pendulum would move back even more. Uh, what about if we're in the other direction? As we accelerate in the other direction, depending on our velocity, we can call that slowing down, we expect the pendulum to swing a little bit. Uh, but if we uh, increase the acceleration in that direction, we'd expect the pendulum to swing even more. Let's see if we can end up calibrating this a bit. I know the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared, roughly. Okay, and let's say that I'm accelerating to the left at that same value, 10 meters per second squared. Then the easiest way to calibrate my uh, accelerometer would be that I want to make the length of this the same as my length here. So let's say I divide this into 10 even increments. So if our bob swung to the right as much as it would be hanging down, then we would know that, let's say it hangs, uh, swings out this way, that the acceleration to the left would be the same as the acceleration due to gravity. This would be at 10 meters per second squared. And we'll just assign this the positive direction. We can probably figure out what our other uh, uh, values are then. Again, I've divided this up into 10 even increments. And using that same length, I've divided this into the uh, 10 increments. Um, let's say it was going, or it was accelerating half as much to the side as acceleration due to gravity. One, two, three, four. Five, we would have a point here. We could see our bob would swing down this way. If we're only at one meter per second squared. What about if we're going the other direction? Let's say we're accelerating to the right, and I'll call that, if we accelerate to the right and the bob swings to the left, the negative direction. Let's say we're uh, again doing this as much as, um, as acceleration due to gravity, and we know that Gravity is pulling down with an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. If our bob is swinging uh, that same amount to the left, so I go up the alignment here, we know this would be at a minus 10 meters per second squared. Let's say it's half as much, one, two, three, four, five. Swing down here. Sorry about some of the alignment, a little bit difficult with this uh, pen. Okay. But we end up seeing then, we end up getting this, um, these fan of lines, and really the way we can calibrate it, we know that uh, 10 meters per second squared down, and for every even increment to the right or to the left represents one meter per second squared. So let's take this on the road and see what happens. Uh, perhaps you're on a bar train, you have your accelerometer here. Okay, and perhaps we're leaving the BART station, we've got our accelerometer, we can see it's swinging out to the right. Let's see if we can make a quick force diagram for the bead right there. So if I go through my non-contact forces, I know I have a force of gravity acting on the bead. Okay, and what else do I have? The only other non-contact, uh, well, I have no other non-contact forces. What are my contact forces? It's really just going to be tension from that, uh, from the string, which will be up in this direction force of tension on the bead. Are these balanced? I'll let you think about that. Are, the air, are there any other forces acting on it? I'll let you think about that for a little bit and then try to figure out if the uh, forces are on that, on that bead are balanced. And if you were to step outside of the part train, what would you see that bead doing? Think about is there a net force on that bead? Okay, hey, good luck with the project.